Hello, and welcome back to another podcast. Which podcast is this again? Oh, Wild Nights. Oh, well, thanks, you thanks missed it asking. this time. You missed it this time. This is the Wild Nights podcast hosted <laughs> by a Nights fan. And a Wild fan. And, of course, recapping all the weird, wacky, and wonderful. We are less than a week away from the start of the 24-25 NHL regular season. All I can say is... Thank God. Dude, I've missed this. I have missed hockey so much. Now, that being said, I haven't really been able to watch anything. And the little bit I did last night, I tuned into very much the wrong game. There were like three sporting events in the sporting universe yeah, that see. I cared there was, about last night. There was the Mets versus the Brewers. Which I didn't watch. <sighs> Ninth inning home run. Well, I mean, you watched it, but we turned I, it off like I, when it was 0-0. Zero, zero, I turned off the game when it was 0-0. Zero, it was 0-0 zero, zero yeah. when we turned off the game. Yeah. Click. And everything happens. Yeah, you can tell we watch a lot of sporting events together, except I don't watch football. So there was that. And then I, I could have been watching Thursday Night Football, which went to overtime. And Kirk Cousins, former Vikings legend, threw for 500 yards. I, I don't care about Cousins. I really don't. Everyone here had a conniption over him That's when true. he was here. I, I don't care. No, I, this is, I don't this care is about Sam him. Darnold. I never have. This is Sam Darnold country now. Well, I never I, I never cared about Kirk That's Cousins. Fair. I never was super impressed with him. Everyone's like, oh, my God. And I'm like, mm. That's fair. He was fine. He just wasn't great. And so that game finished, what, 36 to 30 or something last night? And you know what I watched? No I watched idea. I watched the Knights lose at home to the Avalanche in the preseason. Three to one. Three to one. Yeah, but <sighs> also consider that every team... I mean, we're going to talk about the preseason today, obviously. But yes. every team within the preseason, they they do different things. Like the Wild are very much trying out their prospects. Yeah, no, this was mostly our full roster. Oh, yeah, I'm this sorry. was this was Stone, <laughs> Eichel, Barbershop. I'm so sorry. We're still trying to work on that bottom six. I mean, but yeah, I get that. No, this was pretty much everybody. Oh no. Against all of Avalanche or against like... A good chunk of the Avs, yeah. Okay, so like full but roster Samsonov, adjacent. Not Hill. Samsonov. Are you impressed with him? We'll get back to that in a okay. minute. Okay, yeah, let's get into it. Unless you, okay, you want me to deep dive now? All right, I fine. mean, we might as well deep dive. All right. Um, He looked good. He looked okay. good. He it, it was it was 2-1 plus an empty netter. So oh, okay. realistically, it was a 2-1 game. Yeah, um, and you guys pulled the goalie to probably... Yeah, didn't do a lot. Well, I mean, at the end of the day, again, preseason is try for trying things. Yeah, we pulled the goalie super early, like two and a half minutes to go. It was way too early. Yeah, but, but doesn't also, matter. you might as well pull the goalie because, like, yeah, it doesn't matter. It's preseason. Yeah. But you get to try out your six-man... Right. Your six-man whatever. Yeah. Extra, extra guy, extra man, whatever yep. you want to call it. Yep. Six on five. You get to try that in the preseason. That that yeah, that's, that's a perfect time to try that. Yeah, and I was fine with that. I don't even really care about the outcome that much. Uh, just it the, doesn't count for anything. Exactly. The, the it issue, counts for pride. The issue was this is a precursor for next Thursday night mm. when we open the season against the Avs. Against the Avs, we mm. play three of four games. Um, three against the Avs. <laughs> against the Avs. Yeah, we played them. I beat the brakes off of them at home, six one. Um. And then well, that was what three days ago now, um, and then you know they come into town last night, beat us three one. I think we go to San Jose now next on like tomorrow, so Saturday, uh, and then a couple of days off, and then kick off the season at home, which unfortunately this year I won't be going to because my co-host over here decided to be a terrible idea for me to be awake for thirty hours again. You want to regale them in the story of what I was like last year after going to the home opener? Because you had only hey, you'd only hey, known hey. me for what two months at that point. Yeah, I, I know you bought me coffee, and it is the only time that I have drank coffee in my adult life. And for those of you listening, that is one hundred percent accurate. I don't drink coffee. He refuses even to get up of mine. I, I refuse, and he, I know I, I get it. Caribou coffee is supposed to be some of the best "quote unquote" fast food coffee you can buy, and it is everybody who I've talked to that spent significant time in Minnesota has said that once they leave Minnesota, the one thing they miss is having caribou. It's like the Canadians and their weird elitism with Tim Hortons. Yeah, but Tim Hortons isn't even that good. Don't tell Jacob that. We have a friend, Jacob, who's obsessed with Tim Hortons, or as he calls it, yeah. Timmy Hose. I mean, I'm sorry to my friends, because you know who you are when I say this. Um, Duncan sucks. It does. Starbucks sucks. It, uh, yeah. 
Care Bears decent. Like it's actually really good. Yeah. Um, I've never had Aroma Joes, so if you're an Aroma Joes fan out in New England, I have no idea. Same I'm thing sorry. with same thing with Dutch Bros. Yeah, haven't had Dutch Bros. Been to Oregon a couple times. If you prefer, been to Col- if, you, Colorado. if you prefer McDonald's coffee, um, where are you? I, I mean, I, I'd okay. like to I'd like okay. to know where you are so okay. I can talk some sense into you for the price. That's true. If you just want a like a vanilla cappuccino or a vanilla yeah. latte or something really, really, really basic, might as well. That's true. If you're there, you're there. But so, anyways, we got I totally off topic. How bad was I that morning? Because. I don't remember because you just remember coming home and sleeping. I remember the basic timeline of events for that whole day. Wake up at 645 on the Wednesday morning because the game was Wednesday night. Mm -hmm. Go to class at eight. Be in class from eight to noon. Go straight from class to the airport. Airport, three and a half hour flight to Vegas. Yep. Off the plane, into a taxi, down to the plaza. Mm -hmm. Make it five minutes before the player walkout starts at the gold carpet. Go get go get Shake Shack, go to the game, leave with four minutes to go because uh, the game got delayed by an hour and a half because of delays on the other network because they wanted to show the banner raising and not cut to it. So a game that was supposed to start at six didn't start until seven thirty. Um, yeah. Watch the game, leave, beat the traffic, go to the airport, get on a flight at eleven fifty five p.m., get back into. Get back into the airport to my to my home airport at five in the morning, yeah. Because time zone changes. Drive back to my apartment at five thirty in the morning. Make a terrible mistake of trying to sleep for thirty minutes. That was your first should mistake. not have done that. That was your first mistake. And then peel myself out of bed and go to class at seven forty five the next morning, and get greeted by a, a mint something. Was it a mint mocha? Mint mocha. Yeah. How dead was I that day? Because I have very few memories um, of the class that day. Because it was a Thursday, which means we had, um, what did we have on Thursdays? Lark. Lark and we had legal writing and... Torts. <laughs> so but like the two classes that really don't mean anything. It does explain why I scored so bad on that final, though. What, torts? Yeah. Who cares? I mean, everyone scored bad on that final. Except for you. But on anyway, the final? Anyway, but... <laughs> I did terrible on Long that story final. short... There's a reason I'm not going to the opening night this year. Well, and you have a conflict on Wednesdays. That's also true. I do have conflicts now, like a night class. I'd skip it. I'd skip it. In a heartbeat, I'd skip it. I mean, if you want to skip it, go for it. No, I'm not stopping you. too expensive. The, <laughs> the, the air travel right now is insane. Like, I would have had to have bought those, those plane tickets like six months ago mm. to make it worth the expense. That's fair. But, um, no, opening night's coming up. For, for the nights. It's going to be really cool. Um, the, the gold carpet's always really, really, really fun. Um, good place to get autographs. I would never get autographs, though, um, because the jerseys I wear, I don't like to get autographed. Mm-hmm. If I'm going to get something autographed, it's going in a shadow box and like on the wall or something. Thank you. I, I, okay. This is might be a controversial comment. You've heard this before. Yeah. I do not understand you wearing a jersey that someone signed. Yeah, I mean, my dad does it, my brother does it, my mom does it, but that's because they got them like signed at the gold carpet at the banner raising last year. My dad has a uh, hockey fights cancer jersey that he loves to death that he got a bunch of players to sign last year. Oh, that's fine. And he's getting a couple more. Uh, he's going to bring it this year probably because he's supposed to be no, there. No, no, I, I get wearing it so that they can sign it. Yeah. I don't understand wearing it after it's signed though. Uh, it's his favorite jersey. So I think he, I think it's going to wind up going in a box one day. I think it's going to wind up going in a shadow box. I and if it so. doesn't, I'm going to put it in a shadow box because it's, all a I can white, think about, it's a white jersey. Maybe it's just me, but all I can think about when <laughs> you do things like get something signed and then go to a game is just spilling something out of Oh, yeah. Fun story. And that is so just like nerve wracking to me. Fun story. It's a quick side, it's a quick side piece before we get back to the conversation about the current Golden Knights team. Mm-hmm. Three years ago. I attended uh-huh. my last Golden Knights playoff game. Uh-huh. I've attended exactly two of them in person. Uh-huh. I've never seen them win. You're the bad luck charm. I've seen them hold the lead exactly one time, and it was one to nothing. That was it. Um, Uh-oh, you're the bad luck charm. Well, that yeah, probably. probably. <laughs> it, it, they were both game twos. Um, but it was game two of the Stanley Cup semifinal in 2021. Against the Canadians. And 
me and my dad are in the stadium and the game's not going well. Game is not going well. It's like three one mm-hmm. at this point going into the third. Yeah. Um, and we're sitting there and the guy behind us or the guy two rows back, uh, who was just drunk off his face, carrying a container of beers, miss it, loses his footing and just yeets his tray of beer over our heads and into the row in front of us. Oh no. We get splashed a little bit by some, uh, golden lager uh, or whatever. Um, and yeah, uh, my shoes, very much smelled like I had been partying all night. It was a good time. Uh, but that's, so, why, that's why I just don't understand. But anyways. Yeah. No, no. I, that was the point I was getting to is yeah. I get your concern about that. But anyway, that's enough of living in the past. It's time to look into the future. Woohoo. Woohoo. Into so, the future. So how's it going? I'm scared. Yeah. I'm scared. Yeah. I'm very scared. Okay. Explain. <sighs> Because okay. preseason doesn't mean anything, and everyone knows that. But no. also, at the same time, the people that say preseason season mean, means nothing don't realize what preseason is. Right. So there's been some interesting developments, both on and off the ice, for the team since we last recorded. Mm-hmm. First and foremost of those is the Vegas cap circumventors have gotten another break. Uh, we've <laughs> detailed the story of Robin Leonard a couple of times on this podcast. Well, you have. I have detailed Leonard a couple of times on this podcast. Uh, and last we, ta- last we talked about him, he didn't show up for his physical and was in negotiations with the NHL and the NHLPA uh, just to see what to happen next. Mm-hmm. Reports are that's done. Reports are they figured out what they're going to do. Yeah, I saw that, but I didn't read the article. So what are they going to do? Here's what they're going to do. Uh, Leonard's not going to go on LTIR. Okay. Uh, so the Knights gain $5 million in LTIR space. Of course they do. But they're still going to pay him. Okay. They're still going to pay him his $5 million that he's owed under his contract, but it's not going to count against the books. Why? I don't know. Uh, well, one, the Knights owner doesn't give a shit. He owns most of Montana. Mm-hmm. I, I think $5 million is like a good tip for him. Uh, Bill Foley's really fucking rich. Um, but um, I think this is actually... So the story of Leonard, he's probably got a lot of debt right now Mm -hmm. so odds are that money is not even going to him it's probably going to his creditors Mm -hmm. um but there's actually a way to say like obviously i'm well aware that the knights have garnered a little bit of a reputation of being the bad guys you know trading players away not signing players yeah i think we had we had a conversation off off mic at one point (laughs) about i think it was yeah it was yesterday it was literally yesterday yeah sorry the last couple days have been really long um midterms suck yeah, but I mean, we had a conversation about this and you said something along the lines of, well, we don't get sentimental with players and blah, 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 Yep. because you were throwing shade. Oh yeah, that was yesterday. Yeah. That was yesterday before class. Yep. Forgot about that. Yeah. And my logic was nobody remembers the flurry trade anymore because we won. And my thing was wait 10 years and talk to me then because then you will have things that have basically... <laughs> Kicked you in the balls. That's that's, that's true. <laughs> that's true. So but you that, but you know what we'll have that mm. that you don't. I'm gesturing to my mini cup banner on my wall right now. I, here's the thing, though. I don't care because I know you don't when care. you're a newer team, granted, Seattle yep. had a decent amount of potential. They did. They still do. They do. But it's different when you get the right people in right away. True. But anyway, anyway. But my point is, it's different when you get the right people in right, right. away. And the teams have, that have been around 20, 30, 40 years. And they've got saddled with bad decisions. They they have to make up for the bad decisions that people 10, 15 years oh, ago. Trust me, the bad decisions will come back to bite. We've, been, we've made 10 first round draft picks. Only two of them are with the team currently. Yeah, but that's my point. And, is that it's a lot easier to say stuff like that. When right. your team's new. Because the thing is, is that the poor decisions haven't caught up to you guys yet. Right. I'm not saying you guys have made poor decisions. I mean, you no, might I think you have at some point. Yeah. Every team has. Yeah. I mean, you pass up, <clears throat> you either pass up on players, you trade someone away. We could have, we could have had Faber. Yeah, that's my point, though. We could have had Robertson. And now, like, three, four years down the line, when your defense sucks, you're going to be like, shit, we, we made a terrible mistake. And that's all I will say. No, we would have traded. We would have traded him probably. Knowing our knowing our GM, we would have traded him. 
Yeah, but no, that's my point. No, wait, is that we, would, in the we fan- wouldn't have traded him because he wasn't a first round pick. He was picked in the second round. And also, your fans are mad at <laughs> at management when you guys trade players. So don't say that you guys are cutthroat and all this stuff because your fans are also sentimental. Okay, don't forget no, no, about no, no, no. that. Let, let me let me clarify that. We get upset until we understand why. Like, let's say we like, like but still, no, you let, guys still get upset. Let me, let me let me paint this picture. I'm going to try and forecast something I'm going to say in January, mm-hmm. which would be, I didn't, I still to this day don't understand why we didn't re-sign Jonathan Marcius up. Mm-hmm. I don't get it. Yeah. Or any of the UFAs. However, if we get to January mm-hmm. and he's not having a good year, mm-hmm. and none of the guys that we had let go are having good years. And the players that we retained and signed in this year are doing good, then I'll justify it. Like, let's say, like, I'm gonna get a pretty good, pretty quick lick of these trades coming home to roost, as I think our third game of the regular season is in Washington against the Capitals. And so we're gonna get to see Logan Thompson in the first week of the season. I miss Logan Thompson I do too. being a night. I do too. He's he's such a cool dude. Like he's he's actually taking it pretty well. He hasn't burned any bridges, unlike some former players. Mm. He's actually being nice to the city. Um, but if he goes out and shuts us out, then we're in, then, you know, that trade's not going to look good if he goes out and wins the Vezina next year. Um, but, you know, only time will tell whether we made the right choice or not. And I'm going to kind of leave it at that. I guess. Well, speaking of yeah. the Predators. Fucking Preds. I'm going to, I'm and Marcia So. Blah. I'm going to read out their preseason. Okay. So one of their games was postponed, probably due to the hurricane. Hurricane, yeah, it was in Tampa. Yep. Um. So, Predators lost against the Panthers, <laughs> two to three. Okay. They lost against the Panthers again, two to six. Nice. Um, postponed. They won against the Lightning, six to zero. Okay. Granted, though. Busy. Well, I mean. It was Saturday, September 28th. Oh, yeah. 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 So, like, yeah. you can't fault the Lightning yeah. for not being in the right headspace for that game. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. 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 And then they won 6-4 to four against the Hurricanes. <sighs> That's so not they really saying much. They, but they haven't really... So they're 3-2. and two, Or 2-3. Two 2-2. And 2-2. Two and two. Two and two. Yep. Plus, a post, plus a postponement. Mm-hmm. So they're okay. But it's all going to matter in the regular season. No, and I'm just... I'm like here... My... My thing is, like, granted, again, preseason is not necessarily a good indicator of your season. Right. But m- in most cases, do you think that the Preds are going to go about 500 this year? Of course they're going to be above 500 this year. I said about 500. No, they're going to be well above 500. They're probably going to be probably 50 and 32. Okay. That's that's my guess is they're going to score 100 points. Okay. Um, But we'll see. To bring this back to where I know where I can speak without having my notes in front of me or scrolling through Twitter mm-hmm. um, about the, the, the golden Knights in their preseason so far. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm just going to work back to front and my thoughts on everything Okay, back to front, starting in goal. Um, I don't know how, I don't know why, but we have fallen ass backwards into five really good goalies because mm-hmm. Hill is Hill. We won the Stanley cup for us. Should have won the con Smythe. Uh, really good, really, really good. Although I kind of have issues with his new pad setup, but it's okay because he made a good choice. Because mm. Brian's is a good choice, and giving and giving a uh, homage to your goalie coach is always cool. I'm always in support of that. Mm-hmm. Um, and then the wild card in this, Ilya Samsonov. I had my doubts. His first preseason start went kind of poorly mm-hmm. um, against the Kings, but even though he's zero two in the preseason. He looked so much better against a fully loaded avalanche team last night. Gave up a goal on a shot that like went through somebody and then off his glove. And then the only other goal he gave up was an absolute like lick a stamp and send it to the top right corner. He had no chance Mm -hmm. from the mid slot. So like essentially he gave up one goal that he would have wanted and the other ones on the defense. Yeah. So I've been thoroughly surprised and impressed by his preseason. And I just wonder, you know, he's obviously going to be the backup, like maybe yeah. the 1B, maybe he'll make 30 starts next year. Yeah. If he can win like 18 of those starts, that would be a successful year. Did you know 
that he's got one of the highest win percentages of any goalie in the league in the last two years. That surprises me. He's he's won over 110 games in the last couple of years. Or like in, in his time in Toronto. Let's just say in his time in Toronto, which I think was three years. I think he went 109, 32, and like 12 or something. Hmm. He he won so many games. So then why is he considered a not great goalie? Toronto. Is it just Toronto? It's Toronto. Okay. The, the, it's did, they, did they mismanage it, do you think? They don't have defense. They don't play ah. defense. They're, they they are the Oilers of the Eastern Conference. They don't play defense. Mm. Um, so Samsonov has been a bit of a surprise. I'm going to be curious to see how he does over a larger sample size. I'm just not sold. I'm not sold on him either, but I'm going to give him the benefit of the doubt. Like, here here's the thing. I always say I'm not sold. That's your chance to prove to me that I should be cheering for you. Yeah. And I'll cheer for him, obviously, but um, I'm just curious what he's going to bring in November, December, January, because he can be like he has a, a habit of being like the best goalie in the league for like three weeks and then being the worst goalie for like three months and then be really good for like two weeks at the end of the year. OK, so we're going to see if he's if that was a Toronto problem uh, and they're just up, down, topsy turvy season mm-hmm. or if that's a Sammy problem. I, I think it might be a little bit of both. I think those problems can feed into each other. He's also now working with a really, really good goalie coach in Sean good. Burke. Um, good. You know, like there's there's a joke going around that that goalie coach is the reason Hill is Hill and Thompson is Thompson right now. Really? Yeah, that's the that's the sentiment going around. So that's that's the that's the top end of the goalie pile. But Hill has some injury problems. And so I even run this depth chart down to three um, and three is Akira Schmid and Wow, he's looked really good this preseason. He's 2 and 0. Nice. He's given up I think one goal total all preseason. Hmm. Okay. Yeah, he has looked he was a net for the first half of the game against the Sharks to open the preseason, I think. Uh-huh. Um and pitched a shutout in that first half. And then he only gave up one goal in Colorado against a rather fully stocked Avs team uh getting the whole game. Wow. In that nice. 6-1 win. Nice. So for a number three in the organization, I'm feeling pretty good, especially with his history to beat up on Eastern Conference teams. Yeah, I'm I'm feeling good about our ours too, but we'll yeah. get to that. Yeah, we'll get to that. Um uh so, and then obviously our number four or five our number four and five goalies are less important, but they're pretty strong as well. Even our number six goalie is pretty good. Um but on the on the goaltending position, things are feeling pretty good. Moving forward to the defense, um, yeah, it, it's pretty much the exact same as last year. They're yeah. they're all good. Petrangelo's Petrangelo. Theodore's Theodore. McNabb is good. Haig and White Cloud are great. And Noah Hannafin's going to be amazing this year. Um, it's kind of a race for who gets to be the number seven defenseman between our traditional number seven defenseman and Ben Hutton, the guy who stole my number, mm-hmm. um, and Caden Korzak, who I'm convinced the world is moving too fast for him. He's made so many mistakes this preseason. Um, the only reason he probably won't start the year in Henderson is he'll get claimed off waivers if he does, if he goes down to the AHL. And that whole sentiment of getting claimed off waivers is going to feature very prominently in the conversation about forwards because mm-hmm. that's the problem. But the defense is fine. It's as good as last year. Big, strong, fast, talented. Let's just hope that they can stay healthy. Now. It's it's a health thing. Yeah. yeah. Um, on the front end, this is where it gets a little interesting. Top line, I've got some questions. Because you've got Eichel, Barbashev, and Olofsson. Yeah. Who? Victor Olofsson. Who? He used to, he played in Buffalo last year. Well. That's all you need to know. Okay. He was in Buffalo last year. Sabres his, were shit last year, his weren't best, they? His best season of his career oh, no. was three years ago on a line with Eichel. And so they're putting him on the top line. With Eichel. With Eichel and Barbashev. Right. I forgot Eichel used to be with the Sabres, didn't yeah, he? Yeah. Wow. Yeah, I know. It feels wow. like he's been in Vegas forever. It's only been three years. I the, know. We're going this is this is going to be his fourth season in Vegas now. Only four? Yeah. Cause wow. he so twenty twenty two uh missed half of it with the neck surgery after the trade. Uh twenty twenty three, first full season wins won. the cup. Yeah. Twenty twenty four, second full season. And mm-hmm. I don't even think it's fair to call it full because he was hurt for a good chunk of it. Mm-hmm. God, we just, we cannot get hurt this year. You I guys can, just did not do well last year because you guys so were many injuries. so injured. I mean, the Wild also yeah. did that. We're very injured, but we Correct. just didn't have the depth. Right, yeah. Um, 
So on the front end, top line's that. Second line is going to be Stone and whoever is at his center and whatever and whatever. And, you know, Hurdle's going to be good as a center. And Nick Waugh's either going to be a center or a winger. And Brett Howden's good. And um, then it gets interesting because we've got a lot of empty spots in the roster now yeah. with Stevenson leaving and Carrier leaving and um, and um, Marshall still leaving. Um, so here's the problem. And this is an interesting problem to have. Mm-hmm. Realistically, there are two spots in the lineup up for grabs right now. Okay. There are five people who can fill those spots. Okay. And two of them are waiver exempt. Okay. Waiver exempt meaning they can freely move from the NHL to the AHL without okay. getting claimed. So there are f- the five players. Mm-hmm. You, you, you keeping track here? Yep. All right. Player one, Brendan Brisson. Uh, his dad is Jack Eichel's agent. And he's been, he's the only first round pick that has played a single NHL game for us in the last couple of years. Okay. Number two, Alexander Holtz gotten in the Paul Cotter trade from New Jersey. Good seventh overall pick back in 2020. Good player, criminally underused in New Jersey. Okay. Player three, Tanner Pearson signed a PTO has looked really, really good. Mm -hmm. Really, really, really good. Solid veteran guy, won the Stanley Cup 10 years ago with the Kings. Okay. Player four, Tanner Lisinski, who I had never fucking heard of. I'm like, who? Tanner Lisinski. Lisinski? Lisinski. Okay. He's come in, no idea who he is, has put up like four goals this preseason. Has okay. looked really good. And he wears a number, I think he's number 28. Make He took Will Carey, his old number. Got it. Uh, he's come in, just for lack of a better phrase, made every opponent his bitch. And it's been really <laughs> cool to watch. Yeah. He's played exceptionally well, and some would argue he's played himself onto the roster. Mm-hmm. If not for player number five in this conversation, Zach Aston Reese played a bunch of NHL games. Nobody's entirely sure why he hasn't been able to land on a roster consistently. Mm-hmm. Really good player. Has also put up exceptional numbers this preseason. I think he's got uh, two goals, three assists or something. He's played really good. So here's the problem. Only Brisson and Holtz can go to the AHL without fear of being claimed. Pearson's on a PTO, so we there's no onus to keep him, and there's still the potential to sign him to a two-way deal. But I don't think he'd take it, given the preseason he's had. Uh, and somebody would sign him if we don't sign him. And Lazinski and Aston Reese, you put them on waivers, they're gone. So there are five players, two spots. What do you do? You've got five people who have played exceedingly well for five games. Well, what you do... Is you keep the two people that can go up and down without an issue. Yeah. Do you, do you send them down to start the year? I think so. Because the thing is, is that you guys will have injuries. There is no doubt in my mind that you guys will have injuries. Okay. But here's, here's the problem with that analysis. Hmm. Everybody who's anybody in the Vegas writing community, as well as in the front office, says Holtz is a lock on that third line. So realistically, it's four guys. One is waiver exempt for one spot. I don't know why Holtz hasn't looked exceptionally good this preseason. I haven't seen anything special out of him. Mm-hmm. Yeah, new system. Yeah, young player. But he hasn't looked great. But everybody seems to think he is a guaranteed lock for opening night next week. I wouldn't say that, though. I wouldn't say that either. Because, and here's why. Vegas is very, very good at doing the unexpected. Yeah, and we're not so good at player development, but we're good at doing the unexpected. And that's the thing. I don't think that... I think if you do that, that's a mistake. I agree. I I, th- I think you... I think they have to sign Pearson after his PTO. Mm-hmm. He's played just too well. Like... The thing is, is that realistically, you have the two people, send yeah. them back down to the AHL. They will get their time in the NHL. Yeah, they'll I get their... I have no doubt that the first... That the minute Stone has another back injury, <laughs> they're being pulled up. Okay, ouch. First off, come ouch, at me. actually, come at me. And there's actually another wrinkle that I forgot to throw in there because uh-huh. it actually may be five people for three spots. Yeah. Because William Carlson hasn't practiced in a week oh, and no. it's unclear whether he's going to make it for opening night. He hasn't played a single preseason game. Is he injured? Uh, Yeah. Okay. Uh, But I've read conflicting reports. Some say he will. Some say he won't make it for next Thursday mm-hmm. for the opening night or next Wednesday for opening night. Well, and that's the thing is that. You sign the two. 
Yeah. Out of out of the three that you not you're not sure what's happening, you sign two of them to the team. Right. And you keep the two AHLers in the AHL. That's the only way that Vegas can keep the majority of their talent. Agreed. It's and at this point, it's not the three player, the two players for or the three players for two spots. That is a strategic move that you have to make. And if you give up one player for two other good play, like good to great players that can go into that development, then I would say that you're probably winning that. Yeah, and like there's no like real losing here. We've got five really good players for a handful of spots. The only problem is, um, you know, is there a chance that if we sign Pearson and send him down to the minors, mm-hmm. what are the odds that he doesn't get claimed off waivers? Now, we could do something like um, what the Leafs did last year, I think, um, with one of the guys they signed to a PTO that mm-hmm. they were going to have going up and down. They made it. Um, they made a clause in his contract. So this is going to tickle your lawyer brain the right way. Mm-hmm. They put a clause in his contract that says that he, if he's claimed off of waivers, um, he receives a $1 million bonus for playing one NHL game. Hmm. That it, it happened to Martin Jones last year. Let me guess. He did not make it to the NHL. Uh, he last cleared year. waivers. He cleared waivers. Uh, went to the AHL. That got then got called up a little bit and played a couple NHL games. But because he didn't get claimed, that clause never kicked in. Ah. Uh. So they could do something like that. Um, but it's like a signing bonus. So all it does is cost the money, not cap. Mm-hmm. Um. So like, there's some ways to get around the the numbers and make it work, but. It's an interesting problem to have that we've got two guys named Tanner who are just coming around and fucking shit up this preseason. Mm-hmm. And we have nowhere to put them. Or at least the way that the roster was constructed back in July, we have nowhere to put them. Yeah. But I I, I personally think you got to send Brisson down. He's not ready yet. Mm-hmm. He's close. He's really close. He may be ready in December, but he's not ready yet. Yeah. And... Unless Holtz goes out and puts up like three goals in the next preseason game, Mm -hmm. I think you also have to send him down. I think you just got to send him down for the sake of the, just for the, for the, the fact that he's the only one who can go up and down freely. Mm -hmm. And then you sign the Tanners and you put Aston Reese on the taxi squad, like put him on the bench Mm -hmm. or up in the press box every game. Mm -hmm. That's what I think they have to do. Now this is Kelly McCrimmon. He does whatever the fuck he wants to. Yeah. Uh, and that scares me. Um, so we'll see what but, happens. But, but hey, in your words, they won the cup. They did, but I got to let him cook. I got to let him cook because he made some controversial decisions and they worked. Yeah, but last season he made some controversial, injuries. controversial it was injuries. decisions and it didn't work. It was injuries. Yeah, but you also have to take into account that injuries are going to happen. That's true. The you're problem in, you're is, in a fucking professional sport. Here's the problem, though. We've set the NHL record for total man games lost in a three-year period. We've yeah. lost, we've had more man games lost than any team in three years in NHL history. Yeah, but then as the person leading that team, you got to think how you're going to fill There's that. There's only so much you can do with a team of AHL players against the Oilers at full strength. Yeah, but you're saying that you're like basically drowning in talent right now. Yeah. With these five this guys is a, for this two is, spots. This is a new one. This is a new one for yeah, us. Yeah, I know. But that's my point. Is that you need to figure out how to keep these people. Yeah, no, this is... Because if you don't, you're going to have a repeat of last year. Yeah, no, this is a new experience, having a glut of talent at the forward position. I mean, this kind of goes back to my big rant that you know about. the When mm-hmm. the NHL did their countdown of the top 15 games of the season, I think the 12th best game of the year was when the Knights blew a, th- a 4-1 lead. In the third period to the Preds when they were on their like their like their seventeen game point streak or something. Mm-hmm. The problem that they don't tell you is that we only dressed seven NHL regulars that night due to injury and our and we were on our fourth string goalie. Wow, wow, wow. No, I hear wow, wow, wow when you say that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I get it. I get it. I get it. <laughs> All right, time for the wild. I think that's enough of uh, banging the drum on a team Thank that should be better than it is. God. Sorry. You let me go. I know. So to talk <laughs> about the wild, you know that you My turn. Remember the game that we totally should have gone to? Yeah. The one that we, I said we should have gone to? Yeah. That, uh, you know, Flurry was part of the shovel patrol? 
No, that was in, that, that was, was a different one. That was two days ago. Yeah. That's the one I wanted to go to. What, I the want, one in Denver? I, no, it was in Minnesota. It was in Minnesota? Yeah, it was. Oh, it, I didn't know it was that. La- it, was, it was like on Tuesday. No, I, I, I realize. Yeah. I didn't realize it was the Blackhawks, though, yeah. at home. Yeah, no, it was that game. Oh, okay. Yeah, it was that game. Why did I think it was somewhere else? There will never be another Marc-Andre Fleury. I... There never will be another one. Nobody's goofy enough anymore. I will say I love that man because of his personality. Yeah. I still have questions about his, about him between the posts. That's true. But I will say again, and I said this last episode, he looked on fire. He did. That one night we went. He really did. Like, yeah. Holy crap. Yeah. He looked good. So how are the wild feeling this preseason? Um, I am actually feeling very optimistic. Well, you got a tough division to get through this year. Yeah. So let's 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 recap real quick what what games they have done. So they played they played Winnipeg, they played the Stars, and they played Chicago. Okay. Right. Winnipeg they win five to two. Dallas they lose two to five. Winnipeg they win five to eight. Dallas they lose four to two. Yeah. They won against Chicago at home on Tuesday. <sighs> Two to seven. They play Chicago Friday, so tonight. Yes. And then they start the regular season. And then they start the regular season next Thursday. Against Colombo. Columbus at home. And we have Columbus at home that the tenth. Seattle at home that twelfth. Yeah. And, and then and, and we do game, not the- we do not have any other home games for the entire yep. month of October. And on that uh on that f- on that fateful Saturday evening, the Wild Nights podcast will make its regular season debut at the XL Energy Center. We're going to be chilling out there, having some fun. I'm not going to be wearing a Wild jersey because I can't do it. I can't. I won't. I will not. <laughs> make it sound like we're going to be recording at the game. No. That'd be a terrible decision. No, it'd be really loud. Well, <laughs> actually, no, it wouldn't be really loud, but that's beside the point. No, it would be. Yeah, it'd be pretty loud. Don't don't act like the fact that the Wild Stadium is not as loud as Vegas does not mean it's not loud. <laughs> to say that the XL Energy Center isn't as loud as T-Mobile Arena in that simple terms is like saying that state fair cheese curds are only just a little bit better than the cheese curds you get at Culver's. You want to know something really sad? No. I actually think that. No. <laughs> no. Yeah. No. We're right next to Wisconsin, dude. <sighs> You're right. <laughs> anyway, uh, continue on your continue on your uh, yeah. on your point. But I mean, I am not totally. I don't know. I I was gonna say I'm not totally sold yet, but I think that we have a way like a better team. I think our team has done the work on the off season. I think we have a lot of good prospects coming up. I think. Because, I mean, most of these games, I want to say, have not been our full roster, like, at no, all. No, no. I think last the last one was closer to full, and then the next one will be full. Yeah, prob- I, I would not be surprised. Spurgeon played last game, which I was super happy about. I, I'm impressed by that. I'm so happy he's back. Okay, so Spurgeon. let's see. Uh, Minnesota Wild last game, we had Bogosian, Brodeen, Chisholm, Faber, Hunt, I don't know who that is. Yep. Um, and Spurgeon on the defense. Yeah, I said Pagosian. I thought I said Spurgeon. I'm like, nope, that was Pagosian. Um, and then we had Eck, Foligno, Goudreau, Hartman, Johansson, Kaprizov, uh, Mr. 22, who I... It, Kush- Kushnadinov. Kushnadinov. You gotta I can get this never. Right. This is why. This is why you need to pay the twenty bucks a month to be able to watch all the wild game. No, because I've I've been to enough games with him. Yeah, but but I just never hear the fair. announcer say his name. Kushnadinov. I I know Nadinov is like how you say the second part, but anyways. Right. Um, and then we had a couple of I think we had Rossi, Trennan. Zuccarello, and then a couple of people that usually play in the age. So it was really close to full. Yeah, and we beat up on Chicago. Well, that's not really saying much because it's Chicago. Yeah, I know, but we still beat them up a little bit. That's fair. So, yeah, I'm curious to see what, because 
We never do well against Dallas. No. And I don't know if that's because Dallas is just a powerhouse right now or if it's just the wild just can't get No, the because together. you guys have an issue with self-inflicted wounds because, you know, they used to be Minnesota's team. Hmm. So, you know. Yeah, and it looks like I'm looking at the roster from, like, the games and especially, like, the Dallas games. We did not have our even close to our full roster. You're quiet over there. I'm always quiet. No, you're not. I'm stealth mode today. Okay. Uh, no, I. the Wild have been shockingly good. The only problem is they are in probably, I don't want to say the toughest division in the NHL because I think that's the Pacific. No, no, I'm going to say it's the toughest division in hockey. They're in the I think toughest division. it's one of division. the harder ones because like we have, the Avs are your division, right? Or they no, abs, abs okay. cent- so what, I'm gonna pull I'm this like, up. I, I I know who's in the central division. I just because most of y'all's like Pacific division people are actually on the west coast. Yeah, like let's let's think about central division. Well, let, it's, let's, it's let's the stars. Let's see. If, actually, the let's abs. See, yeah, your your top contenders in the mm-hmm. central division. It's the stars, the yeah. abs, the Preds, the Blues, the Jets, and then us in Chicago and Utah. Utah's in our division? Yeah, Utah's in the Central. I forgot yeah. that Arizona yeah, was Yeah, Central with us. Division, Chicago, Colorado, Dallas, Minnesota, Nashville, St. Louis, Utah, Winnipeg. Yeah. That's a tough division. It is tough division. Only other tough, the only division I think is tougher is the Atlantic Division. Mm-hmm. Uh, that's Boston, Florida, Tampa, Toronto. Yeah. That's your top four. But then it's like a chasm because then you got Buffalo, Detroit, Montreal, and Ottawa. Yeah, none of them have looked particularly good in the I last mean, Detroit, couple of years. I mean, Detroit missed the playoffs on the last day of the season last year. They missed it by a point. Yeah. I mean, um, I would say that they're middle contenders. They're not top contenders, though. But I would say I think the Western Conference is the harder conference now because you've got that tough Central Division and then a pretty good Pacific Division, Vancouver, yeah. Edmonton, or Vancouver, Edmonton, LA, Vegas. Yeah, I mean, I guess. Yeah, but I don't know where the Wilds slot into that Central because you'd have to believe that Dallas is going to win the Central again. I don't think they're going to win the Central. I think they're going to be a top contender, though. So we can we can confidently put them in the top four. Yeah, I think getting rid of Cedar was a mistake for on their part. <laughs> yeah. Mainly and, because of his replacement. But. Dumbo. Mm. So Dallas is in that top four for sure. Yep. I think we can put Colorado in that top four for sure as well. The thing is, is that Colorado hasn't impressed me in the last couple of years, but they've at least been consistent. Th- their captain's been, their captain hasn't played a game since 2022. Again, at least they're consistent. True. Um, do you put Nashville in there with their acquisitions? Here's the thing. The fact that we were beating up on the Jets and what's the goalie's name? Hellebuck? Hellebuck, yeah. We scored so much on him. Yeah. And it, nine times out of ten, I didn't feel like it was the defense's fault. True. So you're you're confident not putting Winnipeg in that top four? I'm confident with saying that the Wild and Winnipeg are going to be in a run for the fourth or third spot. But what about Utah? I don't think they're going to come out swinging this year. I really don't. <laughs> I think that – here's what I'll say about Utah. I think that they have organizational issues that they have to figure out left over from their Coyotes era. Yeah. And I think that that's going to screw them this year. Potentially, yeah. I think that Utah is trying to come out swinging, and I think that they're doing a fairly good job. Yeah. But I also think that they have issues that they're going to have to deal with. Yeah. With the move. So I don't see them being a top contender this year. That That's not to say that they don't have a good roster, a good team, or anything. That's just to say that they had a neglectful, neglectful owner for years. Correct. And now a new owner has to completely turn around the organization. Right. And that's what I'll say about that. Right. So the Wild have a chance to be in the postseason this year. I think it depends on, because like Boldy's not in the lineup right now. That's fine. He'll be back. I know, but the, my point is he's already injured. True. So it's going to just come down to the fact, can our defense stay healthy and healthy this year? Yeah. Because last year we couldn't. Can our top two lines stay healthy? Right. And that's really what it's going to come down to because you have to admit that even with 
the cap bullshit that the wild have been dealing with the last three years, four Blame years. Your GM, he did it to you. I, I know. But my point is, is that even with that, we're still at least fighting for a wild card spot every single year. True. At Except the for last very year. least. Except for last year. And even then we are, we fired our coach about two weeks too late and then came back swinging. Granted, we didn't make it, but we were close. Would have, if you'd have fired him two weeks earlier, probably, I think you guys would have passed up, um, like LA. In I that mean, I don't. Spot. I don't want to say that because at you the guys, same time, actually, you guys probably make it if Nashville doesn't go on that seventeen-game point streak. Nashville always does that, though. So yeah, that's the thing. That's true. Is that Nashville starts out kind of shaky? Yep. Gets a little better. Yep. Takes a dive. Yep. And then basically exponentially gets yep. better. And then comes back Some, with a vengeance somewhere between January and February and the end of March, beginning of April. Yeah. Every single time. Yeah. Actually, on the topic of crazy injuries, mm-hmm. this has been a bad preseason for injuries. Really? Well, Patrick Laine, former number two overall pick, mm-hmm. um, just got traded to Montreal over the summer. Second preseason game, gets knee on knee. He's out for about three months with a Ooh. with like major knee problems. Oh, no. Arbor Jack guy took Timmy Stuchel's head off. Uh, on a hit across the blue line in the Montreal Ottawa game a couple nights ago. Oh, poor Montreal. Uh, well, the there he's probably gonna get, the Montreal player is probably gonna get suspended. The Ottawa player probably has a concussion. Um, I haven't seen what happened with William Nylander after he got his he got pushed over into somebody's knee and left the game. And of course, what the hell's gonna happen with Jeremy Swayman? And the Boston Bruins goalie problem. I'm pretty sure that they. I'm pretty sure that they got a deal. Though. Nope, they don't have a deal yet. So last I heard, the GM of the Bruins said, "I don't know why I'm not playing, but if I was Jeremy, I'd have 64 million reasons why I'd be playing right now." And that kicked off a crazy firestorm, and so they're no closer to getting a deal with Swayman. Rumors oh, that, they went into arbitration with him. And he's not, it's not come out well. Yeah, apparently he took it that personally. Yeah, it's not going well. Um, and so there's rumors going around that they may be trying to trade Swayman. Um, the number one target of a trade, and you're going to laugh at this, who do you think is the one team and the player that they're going to try and trade Swayman for to not deal with him anymore? Yes. No. Knights? No. His old tandem partner, Linus Allmark, who got traded to Ottawa before game seven. That's funny. Yeah, that's the that's the joke, but also semi-serious landing point for him. Um, Why? This, Why do you want to go to Ottawa, though? I don't know. Because they'd give him the money. Honestly, um, I was going to say, come come to Minnesota, but we already have too many cold centers. The situation has taken on a rather Vegas flair, though, mm-hmm. because there's a stopgap. Um, so the... The Bruins had a really interesting goalie camp without Swayman. They've got Jonas Corposalo as their day-to-day starter now. Mm-hmm. Uh, that's who they got in the Allmark trade. Uh, coming back the other way, Corposalo's okay, was good in Columbus, okay in a short stint in L.A., and then not very good in Ottawa last year. Um, and then they had Casimir Kaskasuo uh, on a PTO. He's a YouTuber, former pro, played good in Sweden, hocked a water bottle at a ref. I think he's at the Providence Bruins camp now in the AHL. So I think he's going to be the AHL backup, Mm -hmm. but I've kind of been following that loosely. Um, This has taken on a Golden Knights flavor uh, because former Golden Knights goalie Yuri Patera, uh, who we let walk in free agency to Vancouver, was claimed off of waivers to be Boston's backup. Hmm. Interesting. Yeah. Super interesting. So they're no closer to getting a deal done with their super goalie. Apparently... Apparently, he had an arbitration hearing in 2023. Do you know what Boston said? Uh, Tough shit. No, they apparently... So they extended him one year. (laughs) Right. Apparently, they said... Like, they, they critiqued him. And one of the things they said was that... The Bruins basically believed his .901 save percentage over an eight career playoff appearances made him untrustworthy Whoa. in the playoffs. <laughs> and that man kept receipts. 90% save average. 
he kept receipts. How the fuck do you tell a goalie? And that's in the playoffs, I'm pretty sure. Yeah. Yeah, eight career playoff appearances. So he played in eight games. He has a 90% save average during the playoffs. Apparently, that makes him untrustworthy. Apparently, yeah. What the fuck? Yeah. How? How is a 90% save average bad? Uh, I don't know. In a high pressure situation like that? I, I think the reason that they noted that is because the Bruins lost that series. Okay, yeah, but your goalie... Hold on. Swayman only played two games in that series. It was eight games over, I think, three years. Well. Yeah, eight games over... That Actually, I think it's eight games... Yeah, it's eight games over three postseasons. Because mm-hmm. uh, I think he only played one game three years ago. Played one game in 23, which was game seven mm-hmm. against the Panthers. Yep. And then he played six of the seven games against the Leafs. Mm-hmm. And then got just swept in the second round. Mm-hmm. What the fuck? Yeah. They're going to lose this guy. They are. They're going to have to trade him. You know, here's a weird thing. If they don't sign him, if they don't, if he doesn't sign anywhere by December 1st, I think he doesn't play this year at all. Like by rule, he can't play at all this year. Yeah. So basically, apparently... What, who was the other one, Frederick? So no. F- who's what? What's his name? For who? Uh, oh. Trent F- Fred Frederick. Yes. Is that how you say it? That's a forward, I think. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's a forward. Yeah. Um, but apparently, before arbitration hearings with the Bruins, um. They get like an outline. So everyone gets an outline about their respective cases when you go right. to arbitration. Yeah. Um, he said that the case that his employer was making about why he did not deserve the deal he wanted, and this is from New York Times and The Atlantic, yep. is that basically what I get from that is that before every deal, they basically st- go in and tell the player, here's why you're not worth this. Yeah. And that is not a good strategy. <laughs> for, for yeah, for real. For if you're trying to sign a deal to a person, you want you want a fair value. I get that. Right. Like we're we're both in law school, we're both in negotiations. We under we understand yeah. what this is. But to go into a thing and outline basically everything that they did wrong, everything that you Everything that you can cite to say that I don't believe you're worth this much. Yeah. That's kind of just a shitty thing to do. Like you want, like I get it. You need to tell them why they're worth what they're worth. But if they're not worth what they are, like if what they're asking is not worth it to you, you say, look, this is what I think you're worth. Right. You don't tote out all of the, it, all of the mistakes they've made over the past X amount of seasons. Well, you do if you're trying to get them to, low, to accept a low balled offer. Yeah, but the thing is, is that two things happen in the situation, okay? Yeah. The guy doesn't know his worth and signs, or the guy knows his worth and walks away from the table. Do you think that that makes for good, successful teams? No. To strong on players into taking lower contracts? No, I don't, I don't think that's a good idea. Now, Swayman does have a lot of leverage because he can just not play. Oh, I know. Like, he will get his money from somebody, and he's made it abundantly clear that I, either he signs the contract that he wants in Boston, or they're going to have to trade him. hmm But this whole situation has just been really, really interesting mm-hmm. to uh, well, follow. And it seems like... Yeah. It's a time. Well, it seems like he's holding his ground, and I think it's because... The Bruins in the past. I mean, I don't know enough about the situation. Yeah. But for me, it just, it doesn't make sense why you wouldn't try to figure out a deal. Uh, I don't, I don't, I don't know. On both sides, right? Because. I, yeah, like there's a, a a mutual interest on both parties to get a deal done. But like, what, what's, what's the deal? Mm-hmm. It's just kind of crazy. Ooh. 
What? Apparently, I think this is from, this might be from today. Yeah, this is from today. Apparently, there's a docuseries that comes out today. Yeah, yeah, I, I yeah. Uh, episode three features him. I'm super excited to watch episode one mm-hmm. uh, because I get to see Connor McDavid cry his pussy eyes out <laughs> after losing game seven. I'm so happy. I fucking hate that guy so much. God, I hate that guy. I'm just trying to process what I just said. I hate him so much. God, nothing makes me happier than seeing McDavid all upsetty spaghetti. I mean, they just, they weren't. Because you fucking work hard enough. You gotta fight it more. Yeah, yeah, go get a fucking defense. I mean. Maybe play defense. Don't be so concerned about your hundred assists. I mean, I, I too would not be overly worried about playing defense if I had the entire province of Alberta sucking my dick every day. I'm just gonna let you go at this point. I'm done. I'm done. Okay. I'm done. Okay. For now. He gets two episodes. Everybody else gets one. I'm bitter. Uh huh. I will watch it though. I, I definitely will be watching it, but on okay. mute for most of the time. Uh huh. The only reason I'm going to watch is because Eichel gets an episode. Uh huh. Yeah. McDavid gets two episodes. Matthew Kachuk gets two episodes. Two of my least favorite hockey players get like three hours of screen time in the show. Yeah, well. No wild players, though, which is kind of sad. But, you know, you'd think they would have gone with Kirill since he's the only wild player that matters. <laughs> At this point, I'm just ignoring your, that comment because you say it every episode and I hate it. You're the one who told me the comment. Yeah, because I thought that you would laugh at it. I do me. laugh at it. It's hilarious because it's wrong. It's so wrong. But it's funny that it's. I get it. Krill gets up on the board. He, his stats speak for himself. Yeah. But he doesn't have any get up and go. No, he really doesn't. He He's he's the person that waits for the puck. And if he has the puck, he'll skate end to end, hell bent on getting to that goal. Yeah. But, but if he doesn't have the puck, he's just like, do I go here? Okay, do I go here? No, he knows where to go. He just decides he's not going to hustle for it. You want to something weird about Kirill Kaprizov? Hmm. Uh, you know... Standard hockey skates, how they have that super long tongue. He cuts the top of the tongue off. <laughs> like, um, yeah, like, like they, it, like, no, he goes up to like the upper part of your ankle. Uh-huh. He cuts it off at the top of the eyelets of the skate, mm-hmm. so he can like lean super far forward. It's really weird because he can't just push. The way that he, it's probably just the way that he. It skates. is. It's weird. It's like one of those weird gear things. Okay. That, well, with the time I, we have left, I'm actually going to go back to the wild if that's okay. That's fine. Okay. So, Ugh. just like you did, we're going to walk through the... front, Back to front? Yep. I like it. So, goalie. Okay. I don't think I have to say anything about goalie. I think we've talked about enough about the goalie situation in Minnesota. Yeah, the top three, Flurry, Gus, Wallstead. Mm-hmm. Or Gus, Flurry, Wallstead, rather. Yeah. Because that's what the depth chart's going to say. Yeah, well, we'll see. Um Right. I don't. I I think similar to Vegas, we had a one A one B situation last year, and I think we'll have a one A one B situation this year too. Yeah, I agree with that. So I don't really think it matters who's on top and who's not. Right. So, um, defense. Spurgeon. Well, again, we have Spurgeon, we have Rodin, we have Bogosian, we have Faber. I think as long and we have other people too it's just right middleton i think i haven't said him yet middleton i think chisholm is on defense <laughs> sorry i i laugh because i still will never uh. forget your sprint i here quick quick subtext on why i laugh every time declan chisholm gets brought up it's because I'm in Las Vegas on vacation over spring break of this year. Mind you, I was also, you I were, was in Palm you, Springs. You were in Palm Springs. Um, and we were both, we both happened to be watching. So I was coming back from a night's game, which started early in the night. Um, and we get back and a Kings game is just about to start. It's the wild and the Kings. And yes. um, <laughs> the wild very quickly go down for nothing in the first period. Yeah. And I'm so she calls me uh, right at the beginning of the second period yes, and just lays into Flurry, who had just gotten, who was just about to get pulled. I think he got pulled middle of the second. Um, I wasn't laying that much into Flurry. Yep. 
It was more, I was mad at Flurry. You were. You really were. Um, so I'm sitting there on the phone. We're just letting you go. Just letting you go. Puck comes out to the blue line. Chisholm's got it. He completely whiffs on a slap shot. Breakaway goal. And you were about a 30 seconds behind me on your broadcast. Yeah. And I think all I said was, oh, you're really going to hate this next part. And so the line goes silent for about a minute. And I'm like, hello, <laughs> is everything okay? No, and no, it was the not. line of dialogue that I hear next is the single funniest thing that I have ever heard in my entire life. And to give you the spark notes version of it, because it's one of those things you just had to be there. It yeah, was something probably. along the lines of who is this Chisholm guy? Why is he even out there? I wouldn't trust him to like deliver a carton of milk rather than take a slap shot on an NHL ice. Why is Flurry still in this game? He's given up a fifth one, but I can't even be mad at him because if Chisholm hadn't been there and been stupid, it would have never happened. Okay. Most of these exaggeration. <laughs> the last like 10 seconds of what you said though. Almost exactly what I said. Yeah, and then and then it got to a re, do a reprise. The last game we went to, the last wild game we went to, was on fan appreciation night against <sighs> Seattle, and the Wild would have won that game too if it weren't for Chisholm doing the exact same fucking thing and giving up a breakaway. See, I'm not sure about that one, but we weren't playing Wolves against Seattle in general that night. Yeah, but that's true. That's true. What I will say is that I really hope Chisholm has some actual formal defenseman training this this offseason. I doubt it. Because I, I want to like the guy. I do. I really do. Well, with Spurgeon, he probably doesn't play. Eh, we'll see. I don't know. We'll see. Opening night, right around the corner. That's fair. Um, Trying to see if I can get tickets to that game. Have we'll fun. See. Have fun. Yeah, you're not coming with me. That's fine. I'm going on Saturday. I know. I can live with that. But for me, it was also, okay. Can I also try to justify how I was feeling that night? Because I had just yes. I had just gone to the Anaheim game. Oh, yeah. And they had just injured uh, Brodeen. And Brodeen got injured. And it, there wasn't a penalty called. And it was a blatant penalty that probably should have been called. And then he was out the next night, which resulted in Chisholm. So I was still mad at Anaheim. Yep. I was still mad at the refs. I was still mad that Brodeen got hurt. And we replaced him on a line. With yeah. Bogosian, with Chisholm, who did not know which way was up and did not know how to work in tandem yeah. with Bogosian. Yeah. You need to put, if you're on the top pair, you need to put someone that is heads up. <laughs> yeah. And that is why I have issues with Chisholm. Now, if he works on his defensive game and can work in tandem with his pair. Right. I will not have an issue with him. But currently you have issues with him. We'll see how this season goes. We'll see. Yeah. yeah, we'll see. And then forwards are forwards. Yeah. We got Trennan yeah. as the new guy. Most right. of the people have stayed the same from last year. Yep. Mason Shaw is now in Winnipeg, so. Well, yeah, he is. He he chose poorly. Money. He chose poorly. Money. He chose poorly. Yeah. So. So are we going to do another episode before the regular season starts? I hope so. I hope so, too, but I don't know. Unless there's like some big bombshell thing. I don't know what we're going to talk about. We'll figure it out. We'll come up with something. So mm -hmm. this may not be the last preseason special. I hope not. But if it is, it's been a fun preseason. If not, then we have one more time to speculate about what our futures hold. Uh, I may as well resort to fortune cookie wisdom next time. Um, but with that being said, it's almost time. <laughs> Regular season. We're less than a week out. Yeah. And then the marathon that will be. You think we've been insufferable and bad and loud? For the last couple of weeks. Oh. Just wait until these games start to count. Oh, you are going to go doom and gloom, my friend. I'll try my best not to. You always go doom I and do, gloom. I do tend to take a hard right turn into shitsville mm -hmm. whenever things don't go well. You're uh, like, oh my God, we're oh winning. winning. And then all of a sudden you lose when you're like, shit. Dude, I watched my it's team. Like, bro, I watched my team go fine. like over oh, December last year. <laughs> It was brutal. Yeah, you're fine. It doesn't, I mean, yeah, it means something, but at the end no. of the day, it's just hockey. No, maybe next time, maybe next episode, we'll go over uh, key matchups for each of our teams, mm -hmm. especially the most important matchup being December 15th. <sighs> That's going to be a fun one. Yeah. We, we may, we, we have a serious plan for December 15th. Do we? Oh, yes. 
or at least I have a really serious plan for December 15th. Yeah, you haven't shared any of these plans I, with me. That's my point. Mm. All right. Well, we thank you for giving us one hour and five minutes of your time. If Yay. you've made it this far, uh, we appreciate you listening. Um, if you are on Spotify, be sure to follow. Uh, never miss another episode. If you're on Wine, I don't listen to podcasts online, so click the button that uh, corresponds to click subscribe. Click the follow. Click click the yep. subscribe. If you're on YouTube, subscribe. Like the video. Click the like button. Hit all the buttons. Click all the things. Uh, thank you for listening, and we will catch you guys in the next one. Bye bye.